<clears throat> Good morning. Or Hello class, this section we're going to cover 7.1% sales tax and discount. And there are about 15 problems in this section. So number one says express the given fraction as a percent and the fraction is seven over eight. Now what I did was I typed seven over eight into the calculator and it gave me this decimal. And then I converted the decimal to percentage by moving over the decimal place twice which is the same thing as multiplying by 100%. It just now puts in the percent symbol, okay? Now, I could have converted it to a fraction and then multiplied it by percent, um, or I could have just taken the fraction itself and multiplied it by 100%. Now, the percent will cause the percent symbol to be there in your response. And then seven over eight times 100, um, you can put into your calculator and it'll pop out 87.5. Oh, it doesn't do it. Seven. I can't put the percent symbol because the percent symbol is supposed to carry over. So if I just put times 100, and then the double arrow for the decimal, it does give me the 87.5. Now, your calculator does do everything for you. So I've shown you how to do it by hand two ways, but your calculator actually would do all of it for you. So all you do is enter the fraction that you have. And then once I enter the fraction I have, I'm gonna hit second, and then the open parentheses or the close parentheses symbol because that little arrow means that it'll convert it 2%. So I hit that symbol and then I hit enter and it tells me that the answer is 87.5%. So if you ever have to convert something 2%, you just type in whatever it is and then you hit second and then close parentheses to convert something 2%. So of course the next one, I'm gonna do it just in my calculator. It says convert this, given decimal as a percent. So I'm gonna type 0 0.25 second, close parentheses and hit enter. And it tells me that it's 25%. Now I could also do it the other way by hand, but I just did it in a calculator. Now this one's a little bit, oh, it's the same. It's just convert the decimal. So same keystrokes in our calculator, 0 0.8327 second, convert to decimal, or I'm sorry, convert to percent, and it gives us 83.27%. Now write this decimal as a percent. So now I'm gonna type 86 second and convert to percent, and it's 8,600%. Now this one says, express the given percent as a decimal, okay? So for this one, I would type in 50, and then the percent symbol, which is next to the convert to percent button. So I would do second and then open parentheses and hit enter. And it gives me the decimal representation, which is 0 0.5. Number six says write this percent as a decimal. So 519 second percent, hit enter. And it does in fact convert it to a decimal. Now, next problem says convert this percent to a decimal. So three, four, second percent. And if I hit enter, it should convert it to a decimal. And that is the same decimal that we got over here. Um, so moving on, let's let this thing focus. It says suppose that the local tax rate is 7% and you purchase a car for 16,000. How much tax is paid? What is the total or the car's total cost? So tax is going to be your price times your tax rate. So in this case, 16,000 times 7%. So if I type that in my calculator, one, two, three times seven second percent, I get the value 1120, okay? Then the total cost is the price plus the tax. So that's my tax. So I'm gonna take my price, which was 16,000 for the car, plus my tax, and you end up with 17,120. Yeah. 
with me. Now here it says an exercise machine with an original price, $800, is on sale at 7% off. A, what is the discount amount? B, what is the exercise machine's sale price? So the discount amount is a lot like the tax. It's gonna be your original price times the percent that's off. So in this case, the original price was $800 times the percent off is 7%. 800 times 7% is 56. So then the sale price would be the original price minus the discount amount. So $800 minus 56, and that turned out to be 744. For number 10, it says the circle, should, circle graph shows a breakdown of spending for the average household using 365 days work as a basis of comparison. What percentage of work time does the average household spend paying transportation? So over here in this log, it tells me that transportation is 31%. Then in the diagram in the computer, all of this information is written in the bubbles. Um, there was no way I was gonna squeeze all of that in the bubbles. I couldn't even squeeze the letter G inside that tiny little slice. So I went ahead and I wrote them on the side with letters. Um, and so you would usually look for the slice that has transportation, but in this case, it says that E, which is this slice, is the transportation slice and there's 31 in there. So we're spending 31, um, of our days worked to just for transportation, okay? So then if I want the percentage, that's gonna be the part over the whole times 100. So what I did was I did the part that's transportation, 31, over the whole, the whole pie, which is a total of 365 days times 100. And so when I type this in here, fraction 31 over, Three six five times 100, I end up with this, but you need a decimal, so I'm gonna hit double arrow. I end up with 8.493, blah, 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 blah. But the instructions did say to round to the nearest 10th, T-E-N-T-H, which is the first spot after the decimal. So this nine will make this four go up to a five, which is why this rounded to 8.5%. Now here we have the bar graph shows that the life expectancy, the number of years newborns are expected to live in a particular region has increased dramatically since ancient times. Find the percent increase in the average life expectancy of the region from the stone age to 2016. So here's the graph. These are all the life expectancy ages. And then these are the times in which the data was collected. Now it says for percent increase, that means your new amount minus the original amount over the original amount. So the new amount would be the 2016 amount, which was 68. The old amount would be the stone age, which was 23. So then the original or old goes at the, behind the minus and at the bottom. And then all I have to do if I want a percentage is I have to also multiply it by 100. So I literally put all that on my calculator. 68 minus 23 over 23, and then on the side times 100. That's a fraction, so I'm gonna hit my double arrow for my decimal, and this is the decimal I get. But if I, and it says round it to the nearest percent, so no decimal place. So that means that this six is going to cause this five to go up to a six. So then I ended up with 196. Do you have to pay special attention to how they want you to round your answers in this, in the whole chapter, honestly? So all of chapter seven pay very special attention to how they want you to round the answers because it will change from problem to problem. I'm guessing that the motive behind that is just to make sure you're paying attention. 
and to make sure that you know how to round properly. Now, number 12 says a sofa regularly sells for $660. The sale price is $495. Find the percent decrease of the sale price from the regular price. So percent decrease is a lot like percent increase, except now we know that um, the amounts are going down. So then that means that we're going to do the same thing again. <clears throat> we're going to take the original minus the new. Notice for the increase, we took the new one minus the original. Because if it's going up, then the new one's going to be bigger than the original. But when we're doing percent decrease, you have an original amount and then it's going down from there. So in this one, we have to take the bigger amount, which is the original, minus the lower amount, which would be the new one. And then always, always, always divide it over the original amount. And of course, if you want percent, you have to multiply it by 100. So I did this computation. I did the um, original value, which was 660 minus the new one, which was 495, divided by 660, and I multiplied it by 100. And I did do that all in the calculator. So 660 over, oops, three, fraction. I had already hit the fraction button. Um, 25, so I got 25%. Now number 13 says, suppose that you have $12,000 in a rather risky investment recommended by your financial advisor. During the first year, your investment decreases by 60% of its original value. During the second year, your investment at the end of year one de increases by 70%. Your advisor tells you that there must have been a 10% overall increase of your original 12% investment. Is your financial advisor using percentages properly? If not, what is your actual percent gain or loss of your original $12,000 investment? So we take for year one, we take the original 12,000 and we multiply it by 60%. That is going to tell us the 60% decrease, okay? Because it does say it decreases by 60%. So once I have that, I know the amount of decrease. So if I want the balance after year one, I'm going to take my $12,000 investment and subtract this decrease that occurred. That's going to leave me with $4,800. Then for year two, we take what we ended up with at the end of year one, and that's going to increase by 70%. So we multiply this to get how much it's going to increase. And then we're going to add that. So we have the 4,800 that we started with in year two plus the percent increase. And that gives us this value. Now, the new value is less than the original value. That's going to tell me that this is a loss. Had my newest value been bigger than the original, then that would have been a gain, okay? Now, if I want the percent loss, I have, between these two numbers, right, you need to take the larger one minus the smaller one. So it's going to be the 12,000 minus the 8,160. And then you put that over the original amount, which was the 12,000. And we multiply that by 100. And when you type, <coughs> excuse me, I was trying to pause the video before I sneeze, but it didn't happen, so I popped it. Excuse me. Um, I did type all of this on the calculator, and it did pop out 32. So the response there is 32%. Now, the financial advisor said that it was a 10% overall increase. So what I did was, is I took 12,000 and I multiplied it by 10%. And I did this for all of those percentages, okay? So 12,000 times 10% is 1,200. I did the same thing in my calculator for these individual pieces, okay? Um, and then what I did was I took, since it's an overall increase, right? It says overall increase. So I took the original amount plus this increase, and that gave me 13,200. But that is not the same thing as what we got the other way around, 
Okay. So no, they were incorrect. These people did not say that. They did not use their percentages correctly at all. Um, the actual amount of, in, of decrease because it was a loss. So the actual amount of decrease was 32%. If your advisor is telling you that big of a difference, you have the wrong financial advisor, right? But the thing is, is that people hire financial advisors not knowing the information themselves. And they don't even know when um, their financial advisor is leading them astray. So, um, 14 says, describe how to find percent increase and give an example. Consider the value 20 increased to 45. Um, first, find the fraction for the percent increase, which is the amount of the increase over the original amount. So what did it increase? If I took the big one, which is 45, minus the smaller one, which is 20, that would give me 25. So this is the amount increase. And then if I want the percent increase, I have to take that increase amount over the original value. And this does simplify down to five fourths, okay? Um, it says then express the fraction as a percent. Well, we just do five over four and then second convert to percent. And it tells us it's 125%. Always remember that your amount of increase is the, the new one minus the original, the bigger one minus the smaller one. Now, the last question here says, determine whether the statement makes sense or does not make sense and explain your reasoning. My weight increased by 2% in January and 1% in February. So my increase in weight over the two months is 3%. Oh, here's an example. I took a 100-pound person. I only took a 100-pound person just because that was an easier number to compute, although I know this is not as common as an over 100-pound person. But anyway, I did take this as an example. So I took 100 times 2%. That would mean I have a two-pound increase, which means now in January, I would weigh 102. Um, then I took that 102 because that's my new weight times 1%, and now I have this amount, 1, um, 1.02 pounds increase. So now I'm going to add that to my how much I weighed before, which was 102, and so now I weigh 103.02 in February. So 100 times 3%, though, is 3-pound increase, which means I would weigh 103 in February. So the total of increase, which was three from my original 100 to now 103.02 pounds, my total increase is actually 3.02 pounds versus the three pounds from just 3%. Okay. Um, so what that means is that the total increase is this versus this, okay? Um, because if I take each of these increases and I divide them by the original amount, this number divided by 100 is this percent, this number divided by 100 is this percent, okay? Um, the statement does not make sense because the actual percent increase is this amount, okay? They're not exactly the same. Slightly, slightly different, okay. So that is the end of this section and I will see you guys in the next one.